at the heart of what I want to do conceptually and politically with this album and the ideas around it um, is to really give the sense of uh, history and, 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 and time not being a not being finished so being unfolding um, and be something that people actually create you know so to kind of um, inspire as many people have done before uh, and continue to do inspire a form of um, like radical agency in relation to the historical process. No time in, in historic, I mean, in, in, in didactical materials terms, there's no end. There's no beginning. Hmm. I think the story goes that Mahatma Gandhi was asked, what do you think about the, the French Revolution? You know, in his country, he said, well, it's too early to, to you know, it's, it's, it's still very young in the history of humanity, in the history of time. You can't really say what the significance of the French Revolution hmm. <laughs> is. Same thing. Humanity is still of it. Scale. But that's kind scale, of scale, man. <laughs> that can be a bit of too too philosophical. It can be a cop. It can be a cop, cop out, out. Or, or a conservative response, in a sense, because yeah. it's uh, well, I, either you, either you don't know much about the, the process, and you can you know yeah. say it's sure, too early sure. to make it. But there's also a way in which uh, to refuse. I don't know, it's, it's kind of like a, someone saying like, you know, this is something that's important, we need to consider this. And you know, I'm not saying like the, the French Revolution is the most important historical event or process or whatever, but, uh, you know, like if someone said now, what is the significance of the transition in South Africa in, in, in 94? Someone said, oh no, it's too, 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 too early to tell. Then you say, what the fuck, have a look around <laughs> yeah. society, we you want know, to it's, find it's not, the it's not, you know, because that's what, that's what you are saying, right, uh, in the, in, in the, in the speech about, is that, oh, that's why she was looking, looking like, <laughs> no, but that you people should. are saying, uh, no, it's absolutely the time to, to, to like, take, take stock or take account or make an analysis or make certain arguments. So, so then, what 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 builds? <laughs> and that's a political act in itself. It is, but but then what builds the capacity, generosity, to be able to also recognize that there's something about the longer term view of history that is mm. useful. Sure. In that moment, but so what what are the what are the actions and the processes that would allow us to be able to hear that and then also say, but this is how it's also a cop out. Mm. potentially yeah. and yet it's also this other thing that's giving us a long view yeah so maybe that's the difference in yeah i mean we're, one would need probably more context to make the argument i made yeah. about the particular no, no, instance right, yeah. um, but you do see that move made often yeah marcus solomon and leanne naidu are two people who are very close to me leanne is a an educator um, know someone I think a lot with spend a lot of time with just hanging out I've, I've learned so much from her we've done a lot of work together um, through organizing and kind of education work with different social movements Marcus I mean his his life story is really quite incredible I mean he's been he's a lifelong revolutionary uh, I mean, there's many ways to describe him, but that's, I think, one of the easiest shorthand ways to, to describe him. And we have got 
we have spent a lot of time together over the last few years because uh, I've been interviewing him for some history research work that I've been doing. And through that process, we've also become friends. Um, and, uh, you know, I'd always call him Uncle Marcus, um, <laughs> which after a while he resisted uh, and insisted on, on being Comrade Marcus. They love two cities. And, and one of them, <laughs> it is the best of times and the worst of times, Paris and London, you know. Oh, and then I got my best lesson in, in history, Brecht. The worker reads history, you know. But because he was a great actor, you'd say, Alexander crosses into India on his white horse and he captures India, a country of by then already 400 million people or half a billion people and you know yeah they just imagine class you know one man on a horse he just captures the whole of India now just think a bit about it one man 500 million people can you, is it is it can you believe that and he said no you see a lesson in Marx or whatever class struggle. You see, it's only big groups of people who change issues, mm. change the world, not individuals. They have a role to play, but not one guy on a horse, you know, and he just crosses a country, and a highly civilized country, whatever. Dialectic Soul, which came out in 2020, um, and that is uh, Tembin Cosima Vimbella on the bass, uh, Robin Fassi on the trumpet, and Buddy Wells on tenor saxophone. Um, I have one one new guest on the album, my friend uh, Julian Deacon Otis, who is. Uh, a friend from Chicago, he sings on one of the tracks, um, but otherwise it's just the, it's the quartet. Um, and yeah, I think I, I mean, I chose to work with those, uh, those folks really specifically and I think have written stuff with those, with their voices in mind. So that's what I, yeah, so that's what I mean. So maybe that's the kind of whole concept of the tune. Yeah, I mean, it's very, uh, rhythm is not only about music, I think music maybe captures that in a very profound way and yeah. clear. But again, the rhythm, you know, in the ancients, that you must, there's a rhythm in, in the cosmos. Mm. You must find that, otherwise if you use this, otherwise you'll be out of place in a sense. Mm. There's so much this. In, 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 that's not rhythmic in society, it's violence. People don't understand what's happening to them. Uh, a lot of discord. 
how do we begin to find that rhythm? And it, politically it comes, there is, and I think it's a big moment, I think, and I'm, for example, I don't, I'm, I've given up the idea of forming political parties and so on. We must build movements now, mm. so we can find that rhythm. And it's in the, politically we'll say, in the form of, there is unity in diversity. Let's, we sing in the same choir, but you sing alto, you sing. Jason some false. Jason <laughs> false. Yeah, that would be me. <laughs> that would be me. But I'm there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but eager, you, eager. Exactly. You try to find, etc. You play guitar, you play the sax. And I think the, the, the improvisation of jazz, so that you can do a lot together. Because you come with your own thing. Yeah? And you find rhythm. The word is called. Uh, you can play together. Yeah, and harmony. Oh, yeah. I was in Cairo um, at the end of 2020 and got to play with some really incredible musicians who are based in Cairo. Maurice was playing keyboards and synthesizers. Um, Sharif El Mazri was playing guitar. Uh, Alan Bishop on saxophone, uh, alto, and uh, Eddie Zidane was playing bass. University speak of qualifications, uh, mm -hmm. degrees, or even what you were studying. It wasn't social science students that were making fairly um, cogent and clear arguments about how this transition and where we found ourselves was wrong. Yeah. Like it was not the right <laughs> thing and we had to stop this thing. So for me, there, there is definitely something about reading uh, and coming back to your point about experience but then creating some time out of time, or out of the normative, regulative, what the university and, and even workspaces are so used to doing. is like filling and busying our time to such a degree that we have almost no time to do uh, anything else. And so for me, that, that um, it gave me insight into thinking about uh, what pedagogy or what teaching and learning actually is outside of a, a formal classroom space because it was pretty clear that in 20 years at the university even as there'd been resistance the kind of acute and clearness around how wrong the place was that we find ourselves and the braveness to actually um, put that on the table uh, in, with new methodologies new ways of saying Drawing on old repertoires of shutting down, closing down, using all kinds of methods to draw attention to the fact that actually we're not on the right path and people aren't really paying attention to what's happening. So it, the lessons pedagogically for me, or in terms of thinking about ongoing conversation, was this 
intentional slowing down and opting out of the constraints of time and life right. as it is and as institutions continually universities continually to create the idea that we are learning and researching and writing in meaningful ways when it feels like that whole thing is just dishonest to what is actually going on um, so that kind of slowing down and trying to figure out what is the rhythm of a conversation what is a learning experience and also recognizing actually that prior to that cata catalytic moment there was a lot of small things going on that was breaking open time smaller spaces to talk, to think, to question, to, to resist. That had to happen before we could get to what, I mean, what Star Trek people will call warp speed. You know, where you get to that moment where you've been going along and everyone's doing their thing in a different cabin and then you come to the front and someone presses a button and everyone just goes. Boom. Extreme measures, no heartbeats, even in the coldest weather. Birds of a feather fly together, moving south for the warmer weather. Turbulent times call for extreme measures, no heartbeats, even in the coldest weather. Birds of a feather fly together, moving south for the warmer weather. Turbulent times call for extreme measures, no heartbeats. Even in the coldest weather, birds of a feather fly together.